a very good morning to all and all of gathered here for the webinar on intellectual property. From dawn to dusk, each one of us comes across various intellectual property. The items have a very wide range and are related to food, shelter, and clothing. Things of survival, comfort, and pleasure. In this digitalized world, there stands a higher risk of creativity ideas getting stolen without the consent of the author. Especially, we in the academic community have to know how to protect our own creations and the legal way to monetize on them. So it's important to know what are intellectual property rights and their legal safeguards. Let us begin the program offering our thoughts to the mighty hand of God, our maker and our ever-loving father. We invite Dr. I. Sharmila Liliamna, Associate Professor and Coordinator of Self Finance Section, Department of Chemistry, Bishop Paper College, to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we come before you with a thankful and grateful heart. Thank you, Lord, for this day. We are also thankful for all the blessings you have bestowed upon each of us. We are truly grateful for them. You are the God who blesses the works of our hands. Thank you, Lord God, for making all our endeavors fruitful. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us today to be a part of this webinar on IPR to enrich our knowledge on this topic. May you extend your divine wisdom to our speaker, Mr. Samshula, so that he would be able to impart effectively his God-given knowledge and experiences to all of us. May he be blessed as he continues to bring his expertise to people who need them. Bless the participants as well, so that they will be able to glean the vital information from this webinar. May you bestow your blessings after this webinar so that we may put into practice what we learned. Lord God, the root of novelty and creativity lives in you. Plant novel ideas in our heart and mind. Remove every inactiveness from us and guide us to find patents. Let this webinar and the interactions glorify your name. Be present throughout this meeting. We ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Madam, for rendering the opening prayer. So welcome us to show honor and love. We invite Dr. Rupesh A. Prabhu, sir, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, Bishop Kiba College, to welcome the gathering. Pleasant good morning to one and all who have joined for this webinar on intellectual property rights. It is with great pleasure that in the name of PT and Research Department of Chemistry, Bishop Weber College, I have the honor to welcome you all to this webinar on IPR, a webinar which will be beneficial to the faculty and the student community alike. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the, all, to the uh, Almighty God for giving us strength to conduct this webinar and as well as to the management and our principal, Dr. Paul Dayabharan, for their never ending support in all the activities conducted by our department. A person with great vision and mission, a meticulous planner, a prominent leader, a great motivator for faculty and students, a hard but at the same time a smart worker, a good researcher with a patent under her belt. We are extremely blessed to have a person with such impeccable qualities to lead us from the front. We couldn't have pulled off this webinar without her hard work and dedication. She is none other than Dr. J. Prince uh, Dean IQAC and Head, Department of Chemistry, Bishop Weber College. I consider it my privilege to welcome you, ma'am, to this webinar. Welcome, ma'am. Today's Chief Trust is a highly organized and resourceful individual with commendable success in many fields such as intellectual property management, patent drafting, patent filing, portfolio management, competitive and market intelligence, to name a few. On behalf of the Department of Chemistry, Bishop Paper College, it is a pleasure to welcome the guest of honor, Mr. S. Samshula, who, in spite of his busy schedule, was kind enough to accept our invitation and will be enlightening us with his inputs about IPR in a short while. Welcome, sir. Thank you. 
I also deal with a great pleasure to welcome the deans, associate deans, and heads of various departments of our college who, amidst their hectic schedule, have joined us through the virtual mode. A warm welcome to all. I also take this opportunity to welcome the torch bearer and the silent leader of our department, Dr. Ayit Sharmila Lidia, UG head and self finance coordinator, who has supported and guided us in every aspect of all the activities in the department. Welcome, ma'am. I also extend a warm welcome to all the faculty friends from the Department of Chemistry, faculty members of other departments in our college, as well as the participants from other institutions to this webinar on IPR. I also take this opportunity to welcome all the young budding scientists and the future pillars of the society, that is the research scholars and the students' friends to this virtual meet. We are all happy by your presence today through the virtual mode. We hope that all of you will be benefited profoundly by today's webinar on IPR, as well as with the interaction with which uh, Chief Kirst after uh, the presentation. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to welcome all of you to this meeting. Thank you, sir. Leadership is lifting a person's vision to high sight, raising of a person's performance to a higher standard, the building of a personality beyond its normal limitations. We gladly welcome Dr. J. Prince Malinma, Dean of IQSC, a respected head of the department, a leader we all admire, and a powerful motivator to deliver the presidential address. Respected chief guest of today's program, Mr. Samshula from Bangalore. Respected UG head and coordinator of uh, self finance team of chemistry department, Dr. Shamila Lidia, the organizer of this particular event, Dr. Veda, Angeline Veda, and Dr. Rupesh, dear faculty members, and my dear scholars and students. Good morning. At the outset, I would like to congratulate and appreciate the organizers for thoughtfully organizing this particular event in order to motivate our budding chemists of our department. At this juncture, I would like to thank the resource person, uh, Mr. Samshula. In spite of his busy schedule, his uh, industrial assignments, he has been kind enough to accept our invitation to offer his valuable advice, suggestions, and motivations in order to promote our department patent status. I would like to thank him personally and on behalf of the department, I thank him sincerely for his cordial support to provide his guidance, expertise to our department. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, we, we are all familiar with the different uh, patent copyrights and uh, intellectual uh, property rights. But we are not aware of the nuances in this field where we can get the experience and the expert expertise of our uh, chief guest. So uh, definitely this meeting will give um, eye opener to many of our researchers. And in our department, we have nearly uh, 20 full-time scholars and around 23 part-time research scholars. Apart from MPhil scholars and PG students, even at the undergraduate level, we have projects for our students. So definitely this session, it will be an eye opener for all our students, chemistry students, to focus on the innovations in the existing field. So particularly our students, uh, they are lacking in their guidance, particularly lacking in the support towards uh, the research innovations and novelty in their approach, even though they are very hardworking and uh, they are focusing on uh, the academic uh, work as well as in the research work, and uh, they lack in uh, their ideology and methodology. Therefore, this forum, it will give uh, really an eye-opener session for our students. And definitely, uh, based on this uh, program's impact, Many of our department faculty members and scholars and students will definitely uh, register for patents in the coming future. So at this juncture, I would like to appreciate uh, Dr. Shamila Lidia for taking all the efforts to arrange this wonderful meeting. Once again, I appreciate each and every one of you responsible for this particular program 
I'm, I congratulate all the student participants, particularly the UG and PG students and the scholars who are connected in this meeting. Once again, on behalf of the Department of Chemistry, Bishop Weber College, I sincerely thank the resource person for his wonderful support. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Creativity is picking up new things. However, thought most progress. That new things can be made. That's innovation. And each of us has the potential within us to become an innovator. Here, we have a person in our midst who strongly believes in this idea. We welcome Dr. S. Angelin Vedaman, Associate Dean IQAC and Associate Professor of Chemistry, Bishop Heber College, to introduce the resource person of the day. Very good morning to all the dignitaries uh, assembled here and the student friends and the resource person of the day, Mr. Samshula. It's my privilege to introduce the speaker for today, Mr. Samshula. He is presently the senior manager of intellectual property rights for the company Solara Active Pharma Sciences, which is in Chennai. He has got a rich experience of 15 years in pharmaceutical industries in various management divisions in uh, zones like business development, market intelligence, product portfolio management, and research and development. He started his uh, career in the pharma industry as a research executor in Orchid Pharma then in uh, Reddy's laboratory as a junior manager. And now he is being elevated to the position of senior manager intellectual property rights in Solara Active Pharma Sciences, which is a very big pharma industry, which has more than three decades of experience in promoting drugs in this part of the country. Mr. Samshula is also a chemist in that way, he is a great model to most of our students who are watching this event, who would like to become managers and leaders of industries in the future. He started his uh, studies in Sacred Heart College as an undergraduate chemistry student. He did his post-graduation from Jamal Mohammed College, Bharat Dhaban University, and also his MBA from Alagapa University uh, in international business. And as he diverged into business uh, management, he also did an executive program in the sales and marketing uh, marketing concept in Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta. Out of his uh, uh, interest and in his passion for management, he is now uh, into patents and uh, drafting patent documents for major pharmaceutical companies in India. And uh, uh, we thought uh, in the beginning, why should we arrange a program like intellectual property rights to young students who are still in their undergraduation? We all know uh, about the story of uh, uh, the master of musician, Ilay Raja, who is struggling to take uh, control of his own productions into his copyright. The earlier you know about the intellectual property, the better you will have a standing in your future. And that's why we have invited a person like Mr. Samshula to address young students. So we believe uh, like iron sharpens iron, his talks will certainly sharpen our young minds. And I invite him to enlighten our students on this uh, gray area of intellectual properties this morning. I welcome you, Mr. Samshula, and I hand over the session to you. Thank you, madam. Uh, so firstly, I would like to, uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, so firstly, I would like to thank uh, the HOD of uh, the chemistry department and uh, Dr. Sharmila and all the staffs of chemistry department for inviting me. And it's indeed a pleasure uh, to meet the Bishop Heber, uh, uh, you know, chemistry management. So as you have uh, introduced, uh, you know, I did my post-graduation uh, from Jamal and I have uh, fond memories with Bishop Heber. So wherein we have participated in uh, intercollegiate competition and I myself have won a few quiz competitions uh, conducted by the chemistry department of uh, Bishop Heber. 
So, uh, I, and it uh, still, uh, you know, uh, resonates uh, the beauty bishop uh, memories. And uh, so without uh, taking much time, uh, I would uh, quickly introduce myself. Uh, so, um, um, as uh, Madam said, I have uh, close to 14 years of experience in pharmaceutical industry. So I started my career uh, with um, intellectual property management and uh, I've worked with some of the top uh, generic pharmaceutical uh, industries and uh, drafted uh, over uh, 200 patent applications, uh, um, you know, covering uh, process, polymorph, uh, uh, polymers and uh, uh, some interesting uh, inventions. Right now I'm associated with uh, Sol Limited, which is a demerged entity of uh, uh, Stride Shasun. So uh, this pharma uh, industry is uh, purely into API uh, manufacturing and uh, uh, distribution. So I'm leading the IP department here. And uh, I mean, I really appreciate the management's uh, decision to invite an industrial resource person. And uh, I, I, I could see the interest and efforts uh, that has been put. So uh, I'm equally excited uh, to have a more uh, interactive session so uh, I, I believe that there are people from different domains as well. So I'll uh, try to uh, you know, engage as much as possible. And if you have any questions, you can ask me uh, through the session or if I am unable to answer, I'll always uh, get back to you uh, through email or uh, by any other mode. So uh, can I um, uh, jump into the session? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. So is the PPT visible on the screen? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So uh, we are going to start with uh, some fundamentals of uh, IP. And, uh, you know, uh, I'll uh, just, just uh, give you a uh, brief of uh, each type of uh, intellectual property rights. Let me uh, give you an introduction. Uh, now, when we are discussing about property, we have different types of property like public property, personal property, and how do we claim ownership for all the properties? Uh, now, if you have a house or uh, if you own a land, have uh, uh, particular documents to claim ownership and if uh, possess your uh, house or a land and you, ca you can always uh, go and, you know, um, but when it comes to ideas or creations, how do you protect? And that's what uh, intellectual property rights deals with. So uh, before uh, going into the uh, each uh, topic, let us understand about what is uh, invention and innovation for a new time. So something here, if uh, you know, using it in an innovative way, turning a new concept into a commercial success or uh, widespread use. So in here you can see a picture, you know, uh, on the left, you can see a wheel, uh, you know, that was uh, invented uh, several years back. And whereas on the right side, you can see um, an, an innovative technology that has been, uh, you know, uh, created by the DARPA, the, uh, you know, defense um, of uh, US Army, wherein uh, the uh, wheel can uh, reconfigure uh, depending upon the type of, uh, uh, terrain or, uh, you know, usually for this uh, army purpose. So you can see the amount of uh, innovation that has been put in. So this is the basic uh, difference between invention and innovation. 
So as I said, uh, intellectual property refers broadly to the creations of human mind and uh, you know, it protects the interests of uh, creators by giving them uh, property rights over their creations. And IP can be broadly classified as uh, copyrights, geographical indications, industrial design, patents, service marks, trademarks, and trade secret. So let us uh, just see how uh, each uh, IP right uh, go into. So uh, copyrights, uh, uh, you know, as uh, one of our, uh, uh, you know, teaching staff said that uh, copyright, you know, Ilai Raja is also facing some issues. So uh, copyright is a um, form of protection that is uh, mainly offered to literary works such as novels, poems, you know, uh, music, photography, or any form of artistic works. So uh, copyright ensures uh, protection for all these uh, uh, artistic forms or uh, the creativity of an author, and it helps them protect it from the others. Uh, for example, if you are composing a music or if you have uh, come up with a new story and every day in news, we see that, uh, you know, some or other person comes and claims that this movie story was stolen from me. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, uh, they don't, they cannot uh, go and prove against it. So this is because of the lack of knowledge, you know, uh, they don't, uh, you know, uh, before even protecting their uh, work, they start disclosing to others and then uh, the people derive it from them. And unfortunately, all their uh, hard works, uh, you know, go into vain. So all these uh, topics come under uh, copyright. So it is uh, mainly for the artistic works uh, that is uh, created by the author. And in general, copyright is, uh, uh, you know, valid as long as the, you know, author has created and it has, uh, uh, you know, term up to 60 years uh, of uh, term for the and trademarks service marks so trademarks and service marks are nothing but the brand name and uh, you know uh, it can be a sign a symbol uh, or any logo or a tagline you know why is it very important you know when you have a brand name brand name is nothing but uh, it's a emotional connection that uh, end consumer or a customer uh, associates with the brand and you know it is a kind of a promise delivered by a company uh, or by a product to the customers when you say that you own an apple phone or a samsung you know you associate it with uh, the brand name and its uh, unique quality uh, value and uh, the reputation that it offers so uh, it's very important uh, to protect our brand name so that uh, uh, we can avoid the counterfeiting of uh, uh, the duplicate products in the market. So you can see uh, many examples uh, as to what uh, the trademarks are. So like Subway, Canon, Apple, you know, Nike, uh, Ford, Tata. So uh, the only difference between a trademark and service mark is uh, that if uh, the brand name is for a product, it is called as trademark. And if it is for a, a service, uh, you know, if uh, then it is called as a service mark. So uh, at the end of the day, a trademark is nothing but uh, the brand uh, protection. So uh, you would have seen, you know, uh, so when you see a photography, you would see a C uh, symbol encircled. So that means that it is copyright uh, protected. When you see um, an R uh, with a circle on it, uh, it means that the trademark has been registered. So for unregistered trademark, uh, they usually use the symbol TM. And, uh, you know, there is no major difference uh, between a registered or an unregistered trademark. In case you have to go and sue a person, uh, you know, to institute a court proceedings, uh, it is required uh, for you to be a registered uh, trademark. And recently also, uh, we came across, uh, uh, you know, a tussle between uh, this Talpaka T and Talpaka to uh, restaurant so the they both were uh, fighting with each other as to who uh, actually owns the trademark so uh, that's what i mean uh, trademarks are very important and uh, you know uh, it's the brand name it's all about the quality when a consumer goes and buys a particular product in the market uh, so he gets that assurance that if he goes and buys an apple product or a samsung or a nokia whatever it may be so the the kind of uh, you know, expectation the customer has for this product uh, is always delivered by this brand. So geographical indication is also somewhat, uh, uh, you know, similar to trademark. 
but it is uh, actually given to products that have that have some unique qualities uh, belonging to that particular geography so some of the examples if i say uh, this madurai malli uh, you know tirupati laddu hyderabadi haleem and uh, mysore uh, uh, silk so some of these products have got this geographical indication protection um, and darjeeling tea uh, you know alfonso mango so these are also a uh, few of the examples uh, like i mean this is also a kind of a, a trademark uh, sign you know when when you talk about a tirupati laddu or a hyderabadi haleem uh, you can always associate with uh, uh, the quality of it and uh, you know and it uh, helps the traders to uh, gain certain kind of a monopoly uh, when they place their product and uh, you know uh, it 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 stands uh, unique and uh, always the consumers or the customers uh, would associate with its uh, quality and unique features so uh, that's what the geographical indication is all about and um, industrial design and again this is like you know let me talk about uh, patents later i'll just give you a brief on uh, each uh, ip topics and then let us jump in uh, directly to patents in a, a detailed way so industrial design is also a kind of a uh, patent uh, uh, production um, but this does not have any uh, utility i mean if you talk about if you see the pictures here uh, the coke bottle uh, the design was protected and uh, you know you can see there are certain aesthetic or particular color combinations or ornamental designs so these are all uh, you know appealing to the uh, uh, customers and then um, and uh, you know uh, they attempt the uh, customers to buy the product and uh, so that's the reason you can also protect these particular designs using uh, this form of uh, ip so this does not have any utility if you just go and ask what is is there any uh, utility for this particular shape or color uh, the answer is no but uh, the thing is uh, uh, you can protect this designs when it comes to you know textiles or uh, uh, jewelry or uh, you know cosmetic items you know these particular uh, uh, color combinations uh, you know promote your product and uh, that becomes one of the uh important factor to choose the product so trade secret is another uh, interesting ip uh, and it does not offer any protection uh, you know a trade secret is nothing but a secret uh, uh, for example uh, you can see the coke formula so uh, no one knows what's the uh, formula that use that they use to make their uh, beverage uh special and tasty when you know several companies came to compete with them but uh, still coke is uh, you know the top in the beverages uh, uh, you know segment and uh, uh, talking about the kfc um, you know they say that uh, the the ingredient they used to make their chicken is a secret uh, till date and you know uh, the google search algorithm is also a trade secret what what uh, uh, the benefit the trade secret offers is it's a secret as long as you maintain it as a secret because when you file a patent it, you can get protection for a limited number of years but when you maintain a secret then it's secret uh, overall i mean you, as long as you can uh, keep it confidential you you always have that edge in the market but at the same time you know trade secrets uh, it's always uh, very difficult to maintain it and uh, you know recently also we heard that one of the executive from coke uh, stole the formula and wanted to you know give it to the pepsico and then uh, finally they were uh, sued so all those stories happen so trade secrets are uh, highly risky at the same time it is beneficial if you maintain it as a secret so uh, why do we talk about ip why bishop hebers management uh, you know uh, should uh, ask the students to you know know about ip uh, you know because it makes sense because uh, nowadays uh, the uh, commercialization um, activities are more and awareness of ip is very critical to fostering innovation as uh, rightly said by uh, hod and you know uh, there are people who do uh, hard work smart work day in and out and finally uh, you know they come up with some new invention or innovation they don't know what to do they don't know how to protect it 
so uh, many people are not aware of this and uh, uh, especially when it comes to copyright we could see many people losing their uh, you know stories to uh, some others and there are many uh, uh, scientists great scientists who could not uh, actually protect their inventions because uh, they were either careless about ip or they were not aware of the ip so uh, that's the reason why ip is very important and uh, even for the academic institutions it's very important to protect your research activities and uh, you can always uh, prevent it's not always about commercialization it's also about uh, you know the possibility of information being copied or misused by others so when you are uh, doing a lot of work and if you don't get a credit for it so that's kind of an injustice so to prevent all these things uh, ip is very important and especially with the growing uh, technology it also comes with so many risk and uh, you know uh, there are uh, higher chances of uh, our uh, you know uh, articles or uh, ideas getting copied and then we don't get credit for it so that's the reason uh, ip is very important and uh, and you know even uh, recently when they conducted a survey whether uh, ip uh, you know has been referred uh, during their education 69 percentage of the participating students said no or don't know so uh, this is really a sad part but uh, um, i mean it's uh, better uh, late than never so let us start detailed uh, discussion on patent so although i say i i am from ip uh, the 99 percentage of the work uh, i do or uh, any pharmaceutical company do is with respect to the patents and uh, so patent is nothing but a right provided by the government of a country for a limited period of time to exclude others from making selling using or importing the patented invention so for example if uh, you have come up with a new invention and if you file a patent application in a particular country uh, you would be the whole and sole uh, you know owner of that particular inven invention for a particular number of uh, uh, years and um, and anyone who wants to use make or sell has to take uh, a license from you or a permission from you and you are not going to uh, you know give it for free so uh, you may uh, you know ask for some royalties or some monetary benefits and then uh, you know all your idea can be converted into a revenue making or a commercial uh, uh, you know uh, revenue generating uh, thing and um, you know patents are territorial in nature and uh, any al almost most of the except a few most of the ip rights are territorial and patents per se is territorial in nature which means if you file a patent application in india so you can protect only in india and uh, when uh, you know when you talk about big companies like uh, uh, apple or samsung they have worldwide presence so you know they are present in india they are in saudi arabia canada wherever uh, you know apple is present everywhere and if they want to protect their invention they have to go and file patents in each and uh, every country where they have their market of interest and uh, for example if you have a patent in india and you want uh, uh, to protect in india you can do it but if uh, someone uh, in us or uh, uh, europe follows your invention you cannot stop them because you don't have the patent in that particular uh, country so uh, patents are territorial in nature and you have to file in each and every country uh, where you have uh, your market of uh, interest so in case i'm going fast if you have any questions please uh, you know unmute yourself and uh, uh, you know ask me uh so who are entitled for patent uh, the inventors joint inventors assini or legal representatives so who are inventors so actually uh, the inventors are the ones who come up with a new idea who work for it who does all uh, you know experimentation for the particular uh, development of that particular invention assini or nothing but if you Uh, work for a company or if you work for an institution where you have a binding that uh, whatever the invention you arrive at would be assigned to your company or your institution so they are the assignee so you would be an inventor but the patent rights you would be handing over to the assignee uh, it it is more of a you know commercial uh, uh, you know assignment uh, and uh, legal representative some of sometimes what happens the uh, uh, the inventor you know if the inventor is uh, deceased 
some of their legal representatives on their behalf uh, can also file a patent. So let us get back into uh, the history of our uh, Indian patent system. So Indian Patents Act uh, actually came in 1970, but it has uh, origin in uh, the 1800s, even during the uh, you know, British era. And um, I haven't uh, captured the complete history because we are not interested in that. Uh, you can always go and you know have a look into that. We are going to see some of the key highlights and uh, and you know the Patent Acts Patents Act 1970 um, you know went through these major amendments and uh, this 1999 Amendment Act came into force from 1995, which is uh, um, after the effect of this GATT and TRIPS agreement, you know, uh, General Agreement on Trade and Tariffs and TRIPS is uh, trade related aspects for intellectual property rights. So wherein we signed and we said that we would also comply with the, uh, um, what happened? Are you able to see my screen? Okay. Okay. So uh, we, we made a promise that uh, we would be complying with the uh, agreement. And then uh, earlier, uh, there were no product patents for chemicals or uh, uh, you know, agricultural, agrochemicals or chemical uh, pharmaceutical products. So uh, only those product in the sense a device or an equipment, those kind of inventions were there. And uh, the patent term was, uh, you know, 14 years for product when it comes to and all the chemicals and, uh, you know, agrochemicals were considered under process patents. And it had a term of five or seven years, whichever is uh, earlier from the date of filing or grant. And then uh, when we signed this agreement, then uh, India also uh, started uh, considering uh, this mailbox provision for accepting uh, pharmaceutical and agrochemicals under the product uh, category. And they also uh, you know, came up with this exclusive marketing rights. Uh, if a company comes and markets a product in India, they would have five years of exclusive market rights in uh, India. And then uh, in the 2002 amendment, uh, which came in force uh, effective from 20th May 2003, then uh, it was uh, considered as another landmark uh, amendment, uh, wherein the patent term was increased to 20 years and all the pharmaceuticals, chemicals, agrochemical product were also included in this. And prior to this, uh, they were not considering and uh, in order to comply with the international treaties and uh, and uh, to harmonize with the uh, patent system in the other countries so india also started uh, granting patents with uh, 20 years and uh, they included the definition for invention and uh, inventive step and uh, you know they reversed the burden of proof uh, for the infringement of uh, patent uh, you know claims and uh, they came up with this compulsory license uh, provision for food drugs and chemicals uh, of, of uh, ma I mean, they removed that mandatory compulsory license for these uh, particular uh, products uh, categories. And then uh, they have also enhanced the uh, scope of the right of a patentee wherein import was also included in that. And um, so uh, uh, this, this is considered as one of the major step in the Patents Act. So even when we look, when we evaluate patents, uh, we uh, you know, categorize into uh, pre-2003 era and post-2003. So uh, this is one of the uh, major uh, uh, amendments in the history of Indian patent system. And uh, as I said, uh, intellectual property rights is uh, comes under the Ministry of Commerce. And uh, this is how the administration, like how we have different, uh, you know, income tax office or uh, RTO office. So patent also has its own uh, uh, office and it is administered uh, in this way. So if you see the patent office has four, uh, uh, you know, uh, divisions, head office is in Kolkata and, um, and the other branch offices are in Delhi, Chennai and Mumbai. 
so we have to coordinate according to the jurisdiction so we fall in the south jurisdiction so we would be dealing with the patent office situated at uh, chennai so there are other uh, institutions like uh, you know the same building would also have uh, the respective uh, divisions for patents trademarks and uh, copyright when it comes to trademark the head office is in mumbai and uh, and they also have this geographical indications registry in chennai and uh, and uh, this is how the organogram of uh, the office of controller of uh, patents looks so uh, for us the relevant patent office would be chennai us in the sense even uh, the people from bangalore hyderabad trichy chennai so they all can coordinate with the patent office in chennai so uh, now we have seen uh, that copyrights uh, any music artistic literary or any work uh, done by an author can be protected in copyright and when you come up with a new you are uh, you are an entrepreneur and you are coming up with a new company new product so you can uh, start you can you know uh, protect your brand name using trademark or a service mark and uh, when you come up with new invention you have invented new you have come up with a new process or a new molecule that could uh, treat a particular type of cancer or it can uh, uh, it can reduce the covid 19 infection or you have come up with a new equipment or new uh, new apparatus so you can file a patent so um, the question comes uh, like is everything patentable uh, then there lies the catch you know not uh, everything is patentable and before uh, going into that let me also tell that patent is called as a negative ip right uh, why because when you have an ownership for a particular uh, property like if you have a land it would be generally like my grandfather had it and my father had it now i'll be owning as long as i own it belongs to me and uh, it is evergreen but patents are not like that patents are valid only for 20 years from the date of filing and later on it becomes public domain anyone can not only use the patented invention but also the obvious modifications and variations of patent can be used but when it comes to copyright it's for uh, throughout the lifetime of an author or 60 years or trademark it is like lifelong and uh, you know if you protect it every 10 years you can renew the uh, brand name so apple brand name belongs to the apple company and then it's evergreen so there is no expiry date for that unless they authorize or they hand over their brand name to uh, someone else but when it comes to patents it is valid only for 20 years so now the question comes is everything patentable no actually india has a very pretty decent approach on patentability you know on one side uh, we we want to be aggressive on ip on the other side we have a uh, few reservations in granting inventions so uh, and the patent laws are uh, you know territorial in nature now what is patentable in us not may not be necessarily be patentable in india so um, uh, let us have a look um, uh, actually what can be patented and what cannot be so uh, section 3 of the patents act 1970 uh it uh, gives you an idea about what are not inventions so usually in general the idea goes like any useful product process any useful invention can be patented excluding the following categories so section 3a talks about frivol frivolous inventions so inventions that are contrary to well established natural laws for example a machine that gives more than 100% performance or a perpetual machine so these are all frivolous uh, inventions or it is actually contrary to the established uh, laws uh, natural laws so these kind of inventions are not patentable and uh, section 3b talks about the commercial exploitation or primary use of inventions which is contrary to public order or morality or that could cause severe serious prejudice to health or human animal or plant life so for example uh, inventions that are contrary to public order like gambling machine uh, uh, or uh, uh, mass destruction of uh, mass destructing weapon a device for doing house robbery so these kind of uh, you know controversial inventions will not be patented and uh, and uh, when you talk about the uh, you know prejudice to health or uh, human uh, life biological warfare material or device 
uh, or you know a terminator uh, gene technology embryonic uh, stem cell so uh, except the you know genetically modified organisms uh, these particular uh, inventions are not patentable in india and section 3c talks about mere discovery of any scientific principle or formulation of an abstract theory so uh, for example uh, if someone uh, imagine that if someone came and found uh, that uh, earth has this gravitational force and uh, he or she comes and he discovers this gravitational force and proposes the theory so can they go and file a patent on that no because that's an existing theory and uh, human beings took this long to understand this is how the science the, the nature works so if someone discovering a gravitational force or something which is already existing in nature so that cannot be uh, patented if that was the case newton would have been a patent owner for the laws that he has been proposed so uh, that's uh, that's a very logic thinking and uh, and any mental activity like abstract theories uh, like forming a judgment uh, you know good bad uh, observation evaluation so these are all very relative you know what is good to you may not be good to others so these are all uh, relative to the different uh, human beings and such abstract theories like love sad or all these things cannot be uh, you know patented or any new uh, discovery of a microorganism now for example if someone went and they discovered a new element and which is going to be added in the periodic table so that cannot be patented because that the the the, the actual patent owner is um, the god the nature so uh, they are the patent owners so we cannot go and file uh, a patent for uh, uh, these kind of uh, inventions and uh, section 3d this is a very very controversial uh, uh, you know patent um, section and uh, th and uh, every time the mncs have uh, invoked the indian government for having this particular section and uh, one famous case was with novartis versus uh, uh, you know pharmaceutical industries in india uh, you know novartis came up with a Uh, what to call beta form of uh, imatinib mesylate which was used for treating uh, blood cancer it was a wonder drug and you know it was very good but uh, as per the section 3d any new form of a known substance that does not result in enhanced efficacy of the substance is not patentable for this uh, esters complex new salt new polymorphic forms are not patented uh, for you know in india as per the Uh, section 3d and this issue became very big and uh, you know uh, the you know what is went and invoked uh, the swiss government and they complained that india did not follow the trips agreement and you know uh, we are always stuck between the sentiment and uh, uh, the patents uh, you know um, uh, actually uh, mncs always have the complaint that india is not fully cooperating when it comes to protecting the ip and uh, so uh, if you are interested you just can go and uh, look into this case know what is glevec and you will get to know uh, about the history so i'll just give you a gist because it it's it's relevant to pharma and you you guys are uh, you know chemistry graduate so uh, actually um, uh, know what is came up with a patent uh, for a beta form of imatinib mesylate salt and uh, that polymorph is uh, very stable and it has a very good uh, by availability but uh, india invoked uh, the section 3d and they said that uh, we cannot care grant a patent and they went to the court and the court case was lying in the high court and supreme court for long years and then finally uh, the you know novartis came up with a beautiful argument that this particular polymorphic form comes with a 40% or uh, 30% or 40% of more by availability and that's why uh, you know this polymorph is very good for treating this uh, blood cancer but uh, uh, you know our uh, people came up with an interesting uh, answer to that they said that if 40% bioavailability is more does it uh, do anything to the disease is there any improvement in efficacy i think that was a valid question you know just because being more bioavailable and does not result in curing the disease uh you know it, it cannot be considered as a new invention so based on that they refused to grant a patent and uh, no what is threatened that they would not do business in india and finally you know it was a big and controversial case 
every day in um, uh, we see uh, such kind of uh, cases happening in uh, india so that's one thing so the guest is polymorphs as uh, new salts or a uh, particle size or new isomers of a known compound cannot be uh, patent protected so um, and uh, let me uh, go through uh, that new combinations like uh, parastamol uh, plus that does not result in uh, synergistic effects now you know there is one a and there is another b so just combining a plus b you will not get a patent unless you prove it has some kind of a synergistic properties uh, so the examples are like parastamol plus brufen or any uh, sugar solution and color additives to form a soft drink so these are all not patentable and any mere arrangement or rearrangement uh, uh, is not patentable like an umbrella with a fan or a clock with a radio uh, all those things um, you know um, so just mere and re uh, mere arrangement or rearrangement cannot be patented and uh, agriculture or horticulture uh, cannot be patented uh, new process uh, any process for uh, medicinal surgical curative procedure like a doctor comes up with a new way of doing surgery or new way of uh, removing a cancer tumor or uh, any other surgical method or a treatment method or therapy or the method of vaccination blood transfusion so these are all not patented so um, but if someone is coming up with a new equipment that can perform uh, Uh, surgery or or uh, that equipment can be protected but the method of treatment cannot be protected in india and uh, section 3j talks about plants and animals uh, cannot be any living organisms cannot be protected and uh, mathematical or business method cannot be protected like computer programs uh, so as such uh, software programs are not protected but combination with hardware or its application can be protected and um, you know computer programs can be protected under uh, uh, copyright so mere scheme or any method of performing like a method for learning a language method of teaching all those things cannot be patented so presentation of information uh, topography of inter integrated circuits and uh, or uh, an invention uh, uh, which is known for years you know there were some crazy patents in us someone went and filed a uh, patent for the property of uh, haldi uh, um, like turmeric uh, you know neem turmeric so but we know we know it for several thousands of years and uh, any um, uh, traditional knowledge although that may not be documented in any public uh, uh, like literature or uh, recorded in any form of information but it is there in the traditional uh, knowledge so such properties cannot be patented so uh, we have discussed about uh, what can be patented what cannot be patented now when you say this invention can be patented there are three questions uh, and this patentable requirements is almost similar in every country these are the three questions that will be asked uh, before you want to file a patent so if, you, if a patent eligible subject matter should be novel it should be non obvious Uh, i mean it should have an inventive step and it also should have uh, some industrial applicability so novelty is nothing but new it should be public uh, through by uh, a published literature or any form uh, of uh, uh, you know journal article sorry any uh, any uh, public uh, literature that is available so it should be entirely new and uh, non obviousness means it should have some kind of a significant uh, uh, advancement uh, in technology or uh, economical it should have uh, some kind of an improvement over the existing now for example a plus b gives c in uh, methanol and uh, you are coming up with a plus b gives c in ethanol so just because ethanol was not known you cannot go and tell that uh, this is a new invention yes of course it may be novel but when it comes to obviousness uh, it's it's obvious any person skilled in the art an, an organic chemist will know that it would also work in a similar uh, uh, solvent so uh, you should have some kind of an technical or unsolved need unexpected result or uh, you know failure of others so you are coming up with something surprising that results in a significant improvement or it solves a problem that has been uh, existing so you should have that kind of a 
inventive step and the third one is utility so any invention should have some kind of practical use or it should be uh, practically usable in industry so without use uh, you know uh, you 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 are not supposed to file a patent so as i said uh, you know uh, the term of patent is 20 years earlier we had 14 5 7 years for different category and now it's uh, india being a trips uh, complying uh, uh, nation um, you know we also have this 20 years of uh, term from the date of filing in us also they had a similar provision before june 8 1995 it was either 20 years from the date of filing or from 17 years from the date of grant whichever is later and they also you know started uh, issuing patents for 20 years from the date of filing and now in almost every country it's 20 year there are some provisions like patent term extension which is given for uh, uh, this pharmaceutical uh, inventions uh, for innovators if they come up with new product and they launch it in market they can get a maximum of 5 years uh, uh, you know that's a different story uh, i don't want to divert the topic so uh, in general it's 20 years and uh, and us uh, had a different uh, patent system earlier they were following first to invent concept uh, actually throughout the world it is first to file whoever wins the race whoever files the patent first will get uh, the patent uh, us were following before 2011 uh, they were having first to invent so even if you are first to file if someone proves that they were the first to invent then um, you know you can uh, you can always go and contest and get the uh, patent granted for you uh, but now after the 2011 uh, you know uh, president obama uh, came up with the america invents act and now they are also following the same uh, first to file concept so the guest is first to file gets the patent so first to file wins the race so this is how now we have different uh, application formats uh, like uh, if you see a vehicle you see a particular format for a different state if it is k it's karnataka t and tamil nadu likewise we also have uh, some formats for uh, patent uh, applications so the first two digits uh, stands for the country code and uh, us means you know there are a number of uh, uh, codes that you can uh, find in the internet and uh, the two letter code is the country uh if it is us it is united states in means uh, india and there is a serial number and uh, it has a different format if you see in the us a1 means it's an unexamined uh, it's just a patent application when you say b1 it's a granted patent so i i wanted to co you know uh, cop i mean present all this information so that because now that you are slowly getting into you know ip uh i wanted uh, i felt these are all very important because even here in pharma industry people uh, with uh, phd's postdocs still they have uh, doubt and they come and ask us like which patent is this how to read so that's a problem everywhere so i thought we can ca capture this in, in uh, you know information so that you can know what actually uh, the patent format is so i know i have been uh, boring i uh, so far uh, uh, i just wanted to uh, have some interesting things so i believe so far things are good so let me show you some uh, uh, interesting patents okay uh, so any idea on this so this talks about uh, pressure uh, sensitive adhesive sheet material so any idea what this invention is no so i mean do you know i mean from this uh, image or the abstract can you make out uh, what this invention is okay yeah okay i think you have seen that already so actually if you see the story it's a very inspiring uh, you know i i am a big fan of this company called 3m uh, you know it's minnesota mining and manufacturing company so when you visit their website they mention that we are not 50 feet away uh, from any one of their product so when you talk about this scotch bright or this post it they have multiple things uh, even if you go to the supermarket or uh, the, the car uh, maintaining uh, accessories all those things so um, in 1968 uh, a scientist uh, 
and uh, us was attempting to develop a super strong adhesive but accidentally he created a low tack uh, reusable pressure sensitive adhesive and uh, you know they were uh, like uh, upset with that kind of uh, failure and uh, they uh, you know um, one of our colleague came in and then he started uh, applying this uh, weak uh, some low low tack uh, adhesive for uh, pasting uh, some paper and when they wanted to present in their uh, uh, labs and uh, to the fellow colleagues and then finally they came up with this idea and they filed a patent for this uh, post it and this also was one of the reason wherein even uh, in computers we have this uh, sticky notes and you know day in day out um, um, i'm not sure about the academic institutions in uh, every office uh, you know to leave an information or for every purpose uh, they use the post it notes so that is this is one uh, interesting invention so i want you to go and uh, look into this uh, post it uh, you know discovery um, uh, you know story you will find it inspiring so the next one any guess can you make out what this invention is okay okay it's uh, the invention is shoe so can you make out from this picture the figure 6 it talks about uh, anti gravity can you make out who would be the inventor of this any guess now so i don't know the present generation whether they are aware of this person they know you know the person but not the brand okay so actually it's an anti gravity shoe uh, it was invented by michael jackson the king of pop so i mean people from my generation they they i mean uh, even now he is uh, respected for his work and uh, you know uh, this was the patent filed for uh, this anti gravity shoe so they had a special uh, shoe uh, you know this i think this took part in some album smooth criminal and uh, that time it was a talking uh, story like how he uh you know uh came up with this anti gravity dance so this is one invention and uh, he, michael jackson also uh, has a patent for him so this is the patent and uh, there are some interesting inventions throughout the history uh, i just uh, wanted to take this uh, break uh, to show people like what kind of inventions generally uh, there is a saying that in us everything under the sun is patented so they will give patent for everything and uh, you can see one uh, uh, inventor has come up with uh, this mouse trap device so this uh, loosely correlates to one uh, vadivelu joke for that uh, you know a machine for killing that bed bug so so uh, so this is also one uh, invention for which they got a patent granted also and uh, here you can see uh, a ring uh, for holding a cigarette and uh, 1909 some up came with someone came up with this wing to escape fire and uh, so they have filed a patent for this and uh, so if history was like that uh, even in 2008 someone has come up with uh, an insect sweater uh, which will have an elastic lash to kill an insect insect and uh, so they have filed a patent for that and that has been uh, granted also so on the right hand side uh, this is a 2005 patent i have uh, slightly modified the language here uh, you know some inventor has come up with an amusement apparatus for kicking self so i don't know what kind of amusement that inventor would be get getting by kicking uh, himself so for this they have filed a patent and they have got it uh, granted and um, you know some of the patents are uh, uh, like uh, an indication of uh, uh, the technology like uh, the drone and other things where uh, 
uh, that concept uh, came or disclosed in patents which were at least uh, 25 30 years before and now we are seeing the drones and uh, things like that so these are all uh, 2020 patents uh, where uh, uh, you know boeing has filed a patent uh, to prevent a hacker uh, in um, in multiple vehicles including air and in the right uh, you can see the uh, you know a social distancing uh, uh, apparatus um, you know uh, for uh, all thanks to this covid they have come up with some kind of uh, main tracking and maintaining social distancing uh, patent and uh, so you can see a uh, petrochemical device for covid-19 detection so these are all 2020 patents and on the right hand side there is a fully actuated suspension system and this patent was filed by apple and uh, which will reduce motion sickness and uh, this is also an indication that apple is also interested in coming up with uh, tesla kind of uh, automobile uh, uh, you know um, uh, business so they are in into uh, these kind of inventions and this is again from uh, another company and uh, uh, they are uh, talking about touch part of uh, touch displays which is sensibly bigger and they are telling that uh, very soon the smartphones could, would be replaced and uh, we will have a, a small ring or a, a wristband from wherein we can virtually uh, you know operate our devices so i don't know how far that would uh, come to market and the other one is the apple has been granted with a new patent for virtual speakers so uh, this MacBook can simulate uh, sounds from anywhere in the room and make the users feel as if the sound is coming from a different place rather than from the loudspeakers. So already MacBooks are not affordable. So if they come up with this kind of feature, I don't know how much they would uh, cost. And these are all some of the futuristic inventions. So I'm not sure how many of you do watch movies like superheroes, uh, like the Avengers and all, but uh, um, I mean, um, it's uh, not very far from reality uh, already, you know, some of the countries they have started using drone delivery uh, systems and there are some superhuman clothings uh, for doing all uh, super uh, uh, human works and uh, space vacations are very near and uh, in the next decade or so, uh, you know, uh, this prosthetics or uh, you know, synthetic uh, skins or synthetic polymers or uh, people who are physically challenged, they can have artificial limbs, uh, all thanks to the artificial intelligence and robotics. And there are even futuristic uh, uh, inventions that even for the dead people, you know, they have uh, ideas of extracting the memory from their brain and then, you know, load it into a uh, computer and then, uh, you know, uh, it's a kind of a reincarnation, but I don't know how far it is uh, going to be real but uh, looking at the way the technology advancement has made uh, you know you can uh, imagine that uh, these kind of inventions are very much uh, possible so i just wanted to capture few uh, inventions uh, which would be interesting so let us get back to our patents so uh, this is how a patent will look like uh, you can see uh, this was uh, a patent from Dr. Eddies and uh, you, I know, I mean, you all are very familiar with the journals and other things, uh, um, but this is how a patent uh, looks like. So this is a claim. So what's the difference basically between a journal and a patent? So a journal, uh, even today, uh, one uh, interesting thing is we have people who uh, come up, uh, come uh, with a different background or like PhDs, US postdocs, and they are not very happy even if they have so many patents, but if they publish a journal article, they are very happy. So that kind of uh, respect is there with the learning among the learned uh, society uh, when they have a journal publication. But when you talk about the companies, uh, they are more interested in having patent because that's where they can generate revenues. And uh, so it's it basically the concept is same. You know, it just differs in one point uh, that research uh, paper is for the purpose of communicating the research findings by an inventor to the scientific community and the general public. Whereas patents 
also do that but they also say that this is my invention and uh, i prevent others from making using or selling my invention so this is the concept wherein the journal and uh, patent would differ so usually journal uh, you know the research papers are typically peer reviewed and uh, it involves the scientific process experiments so patents also has similar uh, uh, you know format so it is peer reviewed whereas the patent uh, would be examined uh, by uh, uh, you know the uh, respective examiners so each um, uh, field of invention would uh, be allotted to a particular uh, examiner and uh, he or she would examine the patent raise the objections and then finally it goes to the grant stage so uh, as i said uh, journal is dedicated to the public so you find a piece of information in a journal uh, you know uh, your uh, professor or your uh, research uh, head uh, you know uh, is working on particular project and they are stuck with some reaction or something and they find a piece of information from journal uh, immediately uh, from there they can uh, you know get the idea and start practicing to make your invention work uh, whereas when you find an information from patent you cannot do it if it is claimed so that is called monopoly monopoly in the sense now for example why patent now you have come up with an invention uh, for example if you are uh, if you have come up with a molecule uh, that can uh, treat covid and you have filed a patent application and uh, uh, you know when you do it in journal you cannot stop others from uh, making or using or selling it but when you have filed a patent if other companies or if others want to use it they may have to come and uh, buy the product either from you or if they want to manufacture by their own they have to pay royalty so this is called monopoly and why patent is uh, an asset for uh, protecting your inventions and validity uh, journal is like in general it is evergreen once it publish it is uh, uh, public uh, whereas uh, patent is only valid for 20 years so journals you know i mean uh, uh, in general uh, any uh, you know academic researcher uh, wants to um, you know publish uh, a journal uh, so he or she tries and there are certain formats and standards for each uh journal and uh, they have to abide by that so if if they don't then they have uh, they may not publish it whereas a patent uh, uh, most of the times company also use it for defensive purpose you can write whatever you want to you can just publish and leave it and it becomes public domain uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, going till uh, grant so you can start uh, using that uh, you know patent pending in your uh, products so that's one advantage you have in patent so uh, i have been asked to cover how to you know uh, to file and uh, uh, pursue with the patent applications and all so i just wanted to cover this patent contents so we will be uh, more discussing about uh, drafting and uh, what are all the main uh, contents a patent should have so you can see that it it's almost similar to a journal but each uh, patent office has its own uh, format so i am because we are in india i have uh, majorly focused on indian format but uh, in companies uh, we generally file patents in uh, india us europe uh, japan so uh, we take care of different formats for different country but here uh, it is uh, more uh, emphasized on uh, the indian format so this is how it will be i'll just explain you each by each topic one by one so a patent should have a title of invention uh, which sufficiently indicates the subject matter so uh, there are up to 14 words or 16 words you can have a title and it should be relevant to your uh, invention for example if you have filed a patent application for process for preparing a, a, a particular compound so title should be a process for preparing so and so so that should be the title and uh, details of the applicants Uh, like the inventor name nationality and address uh, that that's very much important and that should be a preamble to the uh, description uh, like we have two types of uh, patent uh, you know uh, one is we called as provisional application the other one is complete so provisional application is nothing but now you have found out something and you feel that this is really a wonderful invention but you need more data uh, you have a preliminary data 
so but you are also uh, you know afraid that some or some or other person may also come and file a similar invention so with the available information you can go ahead and uh, file a provisional application and uh, you know there is a timeline of one year from the date of filing for you to develop uh, that particular uh, invention like you know you may not at that time you may not have the hplc purity details or the xrd uh, all you have is only the nmr ms um, you want to also see uh, how, if you can optimize the process in different solvents or uh, uh, different reaction conditions so without altering the scope of the invention you can always you know come up with the uh, uh, better workup uh, procedures and then within one year from the date of filing your provisional application you can uh, file the complete uh, specification so that liberty is there uh, in the patent filing so almost every country has this same concept so with minimal information you can file a provisional secure a date filing date and then develop your invention and then uh, disclose it uh, in the complete uh, specification so uh, that should have a preamble i will show you you know uh, uh, i'm just reading out the topic i'll just show you how a patent is actually and uh, it should have a field of invention uh, that should be a brief summary of uh, like what is the field of invention the technology that is going to uh, be described and state of the art so in patent the beginning you should you should talk about the background you should uh, and for example you have come up with a process for making a particular molecule or a compound in high yield or a high purity so that should be a background information that what the prior art literature talks about you know what was the information available in the literature and what were the disadvantages now the prior art procedures were expensive the yields were not satisfactory uh, the, they were involving uh, employing hazardous reagents all those things uh, so uh, you can discuss the uh, uh, negative or uh, uh, what to call not so satisfactory things that has been uh, known before this uh, particular invention so you can give a general background on what was uh, in the art of that particular invention so what was a problem statement you can give that in the background and the next one is object of the invention so these are all everything same field field of invention or object of invention or the same you are just going to give us uh, abstract um, you know uh, discussing about uh, what this particular invention is uh, related to and a summary of uh, the same which distinguishes the prior art and the novel features of your invention and then sometimes uh, especially with uh, chemistry patents or even uh, non chemistry or other uh, uh, field of inventions it, we also need to uh, provide some drawings now when we talk about a new polymorph uh, you will always come up with a supporting data of uh, uh, xrd tsc tga uh, or uh, you know if you are talking about a new compound you also want to give the analytical uh, uh, data supporting your invention so all those things can be accompanied uh, by the patent specification so you have to uh, separately title it as a drawing and then uh, um, number it as uh, each page and uh, related to a give a brief description that for example uh, this following figure one illustrates the uh, powder x ray diffraction of uh, the compound prepared according to the example one so uh, you can uh, provide all those supporting uh, documents in the form of drawings and uh, the detailed description of the invention is where you are fully and particularly describing the invention how to uh, operate it or use it or the method how it to be performed so it's very essential uh, to disclose the best method for performing the invention which is known to the applicant and in united states they are very strict about it uh they you know earlier before the 2011 act uh, uh, if the patent does not disclose the best method best mode of uh, performing the invention then the patent would be invalid so best mo best mode of invention is very important now if you have five different methods for making and if you are not disclosing the best method if a person skilled in the art wants to try and reproduce your experiment and if he is able to Uh, synthesize your compound uh, without any 
um, issues, then it means you have all, uh, given the best mode. If it is not, then uh, the patent may be invalid for a lack of uh, sufficient disclosure or uh, uh, written description uh, enablement, things like that. And abstract, so abstract, even a journal will have an abstract. So patent also has a, a concise summary of invention with 150 words, uh, which describes the technical field, technical problem, solution to the problem and principal uses uh, of the invention. And next comes the very important part of the patent. So, so far what we have seen is almost similar to journal, but the claim is the one which uh, is considered as the heart of the patent, you know, the boundary. Now, uh, whatever you feel is the invention would form in the claim. So if there's something is claimed in that patent, it means that that particular invention is um, owned by that patentee or the uh, uh, inventor. So there are multiple types of claims. So I don't want to, uh, you know, as I said, uh, these are very vast topics and we can discuss and debate for hours together. So I just wanted to give you in a, a nutshell, uh, which would be relevant in case you are planning to draft your own patent applications. So claim is the boundary of a patent and, uh, uh, you know, uh, it should have a, a preamble, a transitional phrase and a body. Now, for example, when we talk about, uh, I have given an example there a box comprising a lid with a hinge. So that is the claim, a patented invention. So in that a preamble is nothing but uh, a box. A box is a preamble and uh, you know, uh, it should have a transitional phrase. Uh, they talk about open and closed end transition. So let us not get into that details. So uh, it should be in this particular format. So if we talk about a chemistry process, it should be like a process for preparing uh, uh, ibuprofen um, uh, comprising the steps of a reacting this compound with this. So this is how a claim should be neatly uh, specified. A claim should be as broad as possible. At the same time, you also need to make sure that it does not fall in the scope of the prior art. So um, for Indian uh, patent, uh, there is a particular format. So all documents and copies of documents except affidavits and drawings should be typewritten or printed in Hindi or English. You can also file in Hindi uh, or uh, English. And uh, the, the usually we use, uh, you know, Times New Roman or Arial with font size 12 and uh, 1.5 uh, line spacing. And it should have uh, different page numbers at the bottom or center and uh, single sided. And it should have uh, line breaks Every fifth line, you have to mention a line number like 5, 10, 15, and it should be on the A4 size paper. So that's what uh, this slide talks about, um, that uh, there are two types of filing. Either you can go online uh, using a online payment method, or uh, you can do a physical one. Uh, if it is a physical copy, you have to send uh, a duplicate number like original and uh, a photocopy of uh, your original. So you have to file two copies of uh, patent applications um, uh, and uh, need to be sent to uh, the respective patent office. And the signature should be either Hindi or English and uh, uh, so, you know, supported by a, a description of it. So what forms are required for filing a patent in India? So remember this, uh, uh, these are the important forms that is required in general uh, I, this is a pretty descriptive uh, but uh, to file the important forms are form one two three and five so these are the except for one to five so you can remember like this one two three five and these are all the important forms to file in uh, patent so form one is nothing but it's an application for grant of patent it will have uh, name of the inventor, country, nationality, address, and uh, it will have details like how many pages, how many sheets of drawings, what is the check, uh, how much amount you are paying. So all those details, it will have a fillable format. You can download it from the respective uh, patent office. And uh, uh, the second form two is nothing but the patent actually. So it's a patent specification. So as I told you, there are two types, provisional or a complete specification. 
so uh, and the fee for uh, filing a patent application there are multiple categories so natural person startup a uh, small entity or uh, el eligible educational actually this eligible educational institution is a recent amendment uh, which came few uh, few days or few months back not even month so few days back so they have also included the eligible uh, educational institution and the filing fee for uh, these uh, categories is 1600 for e filing in case you are going with the physical filing there will be a 10% additional charge so uh, roughly 160 rupees so you can say that 1760 uh, for uh, patent filing if it is filed by a natural person startup or a small entity or any el eligible educational institute whereas it is for uh, companies or others it's roughly four times more uh, so if uh, you know on behalf of my company if i file it will be uh, usually 8000 rupees so and uh, for this the limit is 30 pages up to 30 pages there is no fee and if you are going for each sheet extra some inventions require that you have to write in more detail so if there are additional sheet uh, more than 30 so 160 rupees per sheet and uh, 10 claims are free uh, if you have to file additional claim then 320 rupees you may have to f uh, f uh, file and the uh, form 3 is nothing but statement and undertaking so usually it is relevant uh, for as uh, any companies you know uh, it would have a statement that i uh, undertake uh, i i state that the following are the actual and true inventors and uh, so and so company would be uh, undertaking this whatever the invention belongs to that inventor uh, is assigned to the so and so company so that's uh, form 3 and uh, form 5 is a declaration by an inventor so there are no fees so in general filing fees as we saw is 1760 if you are filing as an individual or from your college or uh, institution and if you represent a company which falls in uh, a, a, a large entity then the fees is four times uh, more than what is uh, actually for a natural person so in addition to that there are uh, relevant forms so in general when you file a patent uh, as i said Uh, for example uh, 5th of 5th jan 2020 you are filing a provisional application that becomes your date of filing and before 5 jan 2021 you have to file a complete specification otherwise the provisional application would be abandoned uh, so the timelines are very very important in patent fees and timelines has to be maintained otherwise it will be uh, lapsed and no one can go and do anything about it so uh, for example you have filed a, a patent uh, provisional on 5th of jan 2020 and before 5 june 2021 you need to file a complete uh, specification and uh, in 18 months from the date of filing some people prefer to file uh, a complete specification uh, for example you have a completely developed invention and you don't have any scope to further improve the experiment or anything you can uh, opt to go for a complete uh, specification Uh, if not you can uh, file a provisional and then later on come up with a complete uh, draft but the scope should be same uh, if you have filed a provisional application that you are uh, talking about a novel polymorphic form of a uh, compound and you are coming up with uh, additional details of, of another polymorph or another process then you can do it but only thing is uh, whatever the old invention will have the priority date on the date of filing uh, for the new matter it would be from the next date um, you know this date is very important when they actually uh, examine for the novelty and other purpose so in the meanwhile if someone else has filed a patent imagine that they will have uh, that would be a novelty destroying document and eventually the first to file wins the race so uh, and in 18 months generally the patent uh, publishes in the indian gazette from the date of filing Uh, so some companies want to publish it early so if you want to publish it without i don't want to wait until 18 months if i want to publish it before so we can file a form 9 with this uh, uh, you know fee of 2500 and then uh, generally within a month uh, of that request uh, the patent gets uh, published patent application so and uh, after that uh, as i said now you have applied for a patent which got published 
now whether it is granted or not for that you need to file a request for examination unless you don't request for an examination no your patent would be lying as such so after uh, uh, 48 months uh, then it would get abandoned uh, because there was no request for examination so a request for examination should be filed from the 48 months from the date of filing or priority whichever is earlier so it may be quite confusing when i read out here when you sit and uh, you know i have uh, i'll be sharing the slides to the uh, representative uh, you know dr uh, sharmila uh, so uh, you can go through and then if you have any questions from this i can uh, even uh, you know answer you offline so i have made all the relevant forms so uh, within 48 months you may have to file a request for examination and then once you do that the examiner would be allotted and uh, he would examine your uh, patent application and uh, as i said if you want to file a patent application outside india you can do it but uh, there is a restriction you cannot directly go and file a patent outside india without seeking a permission from uh, our countries uh, because uh, sometimes you know uh, inventions related to energy or atomic energy Uh, some controversial inventions are there so you should not go and uh, you know disclose such uh, secrets outside our country so if you want to directly file a foreign application you can do but for that you have to file a form 25 and uh, seek a permission from the controller or else generally how in our companies we do is uh, we file a patent application after 6 weeks uh, we file it in uh, the countries where we are actually interested so Uh, there are two ways of doing it after 6 weeks if you don't get any uh, i mean there are there is something called a secrecy direction so if uh, any inventions which are controversial uh, related to weapon arms or atomic energy uh, they would generally not uh, that would be uh, categorized or classified under the secrecy direction and then uh, you are not supposed to you know publish it elsewhere so uh, so anyhow uh, we are not going to work in such kind of uh, uh, inventions i mean at least uh, from the company per se uh, so such inventions you need to seek permission and if they allow you can go ahead and file in the foreign uh, countries and form 26 now uh, for example uh, the you know uh, research uh, uh, research people in bishop heber they have come up with a patent application and they want to file it through some patent agent they can do so by taking the help of a law firm and they need to give some kind of power of attorney in form 26 so that the attorney will be representing all the prosecution uh, from filing to grant of the patent until uh, uh, the patent gets granted and even after that uh, paying uh, the renewal fee and things like that so these are all the important forms and uh, so as i said we have different categories so natural person is nothing but an individual now if uh, an individual uh, comes up with an invention so he will fall in this natural person category so startup is nothing but uh, it's an entity recognized as under the startup india initiative uh, which like they have multiple categories like micro enterprise small enterprise medium enterprise so depending upon now if they have an investment in plant and machinery which does not exceed 1 crore and turnover does not exceed 5 crore it will be considered as micro so they have different categories and to encourage the small time uh, uh, entities uh, government has come up with uh, subsidized uh, fees and things like that so uh, so they can have a look according to their category so now recently they have included this eligible educational institution which is a very good uh, initiative uh, that they are also considering but uh, um, a lot has to be understand because it says that any institution established by a central provi provincial or a state act which is owned or controlled by the government and is wholly or substantially financed by the government so whether the private institutions would be falling under this um and you know that needs to be seen uh, to get this kind of a subsidy from the uh, patent office so this generally outlines the procedure now like how you have a vehicle if you buy a new vehicle it will have a temporary registration and then goes for a permanent registration likewise patent also is subject to uh, an examination only if that categorized under thus if it uh, succeeds in the novelty inventive step 
and utility parameters the patent would be granted otherwise it would be rejected so that's a simple fundamental of this patent procedure so here here you can see the flow chart as i said you are filing a patent application either you choose to file a provisional or a complete so if you file a provisional you have 12 months to file a complete specification and one more thing is a provisional application does need not have a claims because you don't know what uh, should be the claim at that point of a time so it can be a simple example working example and a few diagram supporting that that can form a provisional specification and claims are not mandatory but when you go with a complete specification claims are mandatory so uh, in 12 months period of time you file a complete specification and then uh, uh, if you fail to do so uh, then uh, it is considered as a deemed to be withdrawn and after filing complete 18 months later it gets published and within 48 months a request for examination has to be filed in that you can see two category so if it is not filed then again it gets withdrawn if you file then uh, the examiner uh, is allotted and then the examiner goes through your patent and then uh, searches for the literature and he categorizes whether it is novel non obvious and uh, uh, it has any industrial uh, applicability after that he comes up with his objections and uh, you know uh, he gives you something called a first examination report and uh, from after getting that first examination report you have 6 months of time which can be extendable up to 3 months so you have maximum of 9 months to comply with the objections no he will come up and say that no 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 this particular invention is not novel it is already known in this particular literature or a patent or a journal so you have to go and convince him that no that is an entirely different invention and uh, he will say that this is very obvious so you can go and tell that no my invention is uh, is uh, is actually it's a surprising di discovery uh, it has fantastic yield it is stable so or many i mean whatever you feel as the invention you can uh, there is a kind of an uh, uh, what to call uh, objection and uh, and argument that would be going uh, as a transaction and eventually finally if you convince the examiner he uh, uh, you know uh, decides to grant your patent if not there are multiple ways so then uh, they will invite you for a hearing and after uh, hearing if the objections are complied then they grant the patent if still it is pending then they will finally reject the patent and uh, all these decisions are again appealable so you can appeal in the um so board called ipa the intellectual property uh, appellate board which is equivalent to high court or you can take it to the high court and then go to the supreme court like how no what is did for their patent so if the patent office is refusing to grant you you can always appeal it in the higher courts and then uh, you know uh, contest uh, uh, the the court proceedings legally so as i said uh, this timeline uh, was with respect to indian patent filing we did not discuss about the foreign filings okay filing in india is okay but i am an inventor my invention uh, would be very good even if i go to other country so how is the timeline there so in general if you file a patent in india or elsewhere you have 12 months uh, this time is called grace period so uh, within this period you can opt to file in any countries you want to uh, go uh, for example uh, you, um, like uh, i was working with apotex which is a canada based uh, multinational company so their market interest is canada us europe and australia so these are the four and rest of the countries they have a very minimal presence so if you file a patent it involves lot of cost so they don't generally decide to file a patent say, everywhere so they just majorly focus focus on these four countries so if you want to file a patent in another country you have 12 months of time from the date of your filing in your uh, uh, previous country so from the priority date we say so within this 12 months you can choose but this there are multiple types one is called as ordinary application another one is conventional application the third one is pct so ordinary application is nothing but filing in india conventional application is uh, out of this we signed a paris convention wherein all the signed countries have agreed that they will give a 
grace period of 12 months from the date of your first filing and within this span you can go ahead and file your patent in any other country where you have market presence so you what will happen in absence of such uh, uh, provision what would happen you have filed a patent in india and you with that priority you are going and claiming in europe you are within 12 months or after 12 uh, i mean in the 12th month you are going and filing in europe what would happen is your own patent application would be considered as a priority so in order to overcome that they have given this grace period so there is another route called pct pct is nothing but patent cooperation treaty uh, it is kind of an international application so this uh, is a very fantastic uh, move now when apple or a samsung or a, a company like a pfizer they almost operate in every country across the globe they are the market leaders in their respective segments and if they want to file patent in all the countries and to decide whether this particular invention is of use will that uh, re reward them uh, with any revenue 12 months is not at all sufficient to evaluate that so the, for that they have come up with a, a treaty called patent cooperation treaty as on date 150 uh, sorry 152 uh, contracting states are there india is also one of them and when you file a pct application claiming priority from your local filing you have 30 months of time to enter into any of these countries so within this 30 months you can evaluate now if there are particular products which will work in 10 countries but it will not be good in uh, rest of the 10 countries you can opt to up not to enter into those countries so there are two routes uh, either you can go with the Pro paris convention where you have uh, only two three countries to enter or you can go through the pct route uh, where you have 30 months of time and then you can uh, slowly enter into any of this 152 countries where you feel you have a good market presence this is how the basics of uh, patent filing and uh, timelines uh, forms required the content the format all those things now i also want uh, you to look into this uh, new initiative that our country uh, that our uh, government has come up with which is called the scheme for facilitating startups intellectual property protection sipp scheme actually it was uh, launched in 2016 to encourage and facilitate ipr protection by startups now what happens some of the great inventions you know uh, uh, we have heard about uh, a story of xerox Uh, you know we use xerox per se for uh, the photocopy actually xerox is a company name it's a brand name uh, what they did is they failed to protect their invention as a result of which they have lost close to 35 billion dollars and if you see uh, today's worth 1 billion is roughly equivalent to 7500 crores indian crore rupees and uh, because they took a uh, you know wrong step uh, they could not prevent their invention and uh, that time it was kind of a disruptive uh, innovation so uh, patents are very much important and uh, if you see uh, uh, some of the landmark cases apple versus samsung you know apple went and filed a case against samsung telling that they they are copying their in patented invention of uh, some you know uh, slide uh, technology or the design and uh, the us court ordered samsung to pay 1 billion dollar as penalty to uh, apple so you can uh, imagine uh, 7500 crores as a penalty for not respecting the patent of apple on one side what patent does is to protect your invention on the other side it is also kind of a gamble if you have monopoly and you can imagine like if uh, samsung paid uh, 1 billion dollar and uh, you know you 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 simply get revenue without even selling your product so it's all about the money game so and uh, the western countries are very professional and uh, uh, actually they are very smart in converting their ideas into uh, commercial um, um, you know uh, revenue generating uh, things so th that's where um, you know we as a country were lacking behind um you know even companies are uh, coming and complaining that we are not uh, actually so strong in protecting the ip because we are always sentimentally driven uh, but there should be a kind of a balance 
in uh, in in what we call as uh, giving uh, the you know incentives for the company which spend uh, their efforts in research and development and also uh, taking care of uh, the uh, public interest so there should be a kind of a balance so patent is uh, highly uh, uh, smart and equally risky and dangerous game imagine if samsung was capable of uh, paying it if it was for a small company or a small entity they would have gone uh, bankrupt uh, so uh, that's the beauty about uh, the intellectual property rights and every company is striving to capture the market through ip uh, so that they can have uh, edge in the market so coming back to this sapp scheme um, uh, this is a new initiative as i said Uh, they have come up with uh, many interesting things which i feel uh, you all can uh, benefit from this uh, so they have uh, encouraged all the small and uh, um, you know startup uh, companies also to come up with uh, um, you know uh, uh, new ideas and then they can protect their uh, ips if you see even in the pharmaceutical industry um, the new molecules which are getting approved day by day it's not from a pfizer or a, or a or a astrazeneca or novartis or a gilead you can see that that molecule has been developed by some university or some small time uh, uh, company and then these people like pfizer or the merck they go and collaborate with them and then they develop the molecule and then finally they launch it so most of the uh, new inventions are coming up with a uh, unknown or a less popular uh, people so in order to protect their ips and you know government has come up with this kind of uh, initiative to promote their ip and nurturing innovation and creativity and uh, i think this is also a result why we see these days uh, academic institutions are also slowly turning into ip which is really a very welcome move actually so that's a very great thing and uh, under this part of the scheme they also extend assistance to the educational institutions uh, ngos uh, startups etc so the benefits of uh, uh, this uh, sapp scheme is if uh, they are uh, enrolling themselves in the startup now i heard from madam uh, sharmila that uh, you know some of you want to be uh, entrepreneurs so uh, when you are starting these are all the things which you want to remember which we would like to remember that uh, if uh, you are a startup and if you are recognized under uh, this uh, sapp uh, you know these are all the benefits that you will have that you can self certify with labor laws up to 3 years you don't have to comply with this uh, there is no inspection for these kind of laws there are tax exemption for 3 consecutive years and even the patent registration fees is also less almost 80% uh, rebate in your fees and uh, 50% uh, in uh, trademark registration so there are number of uh, facilities so as a result of the startup india you know so many people uh, have uh, received the fee benefits from this and uh, you know um, uh, so uh, under this scheme they have come up with facilitators so uh, government of india has uh, arranged some kind of a setup so who will be kind of a facilitator to uh, manage the ips from uh, different uh, entities like small uh, entities uh, educational institutions so these are all uh, the people like patent agents i am myself a patent agent i have uh, you know qualified and i am a registered patent agent so i can practice in front of the intellectual property office for all the patent related matters so there are uh, many patent and trademark agents who will be in this facilitator list and any startup company uh, want to take the help of uh, these facilitators to file or to prosecute uh, their ip or uh, welcome to do so you know government has uh, provided that scheme now uh, one what they have to do is they just have to pay the statutory fee for example if you want to file a patent you just have to file the patent fee uh, whereas to facilitate it uh, like right right from drafting or filing or uh, administrative uh, proceedings these facilitators can help so government has announced 20000 rupees if you uh, as uh, uh, professional charges so they can these facilitators can help you file a patent and they can reimburse the uh, amount from the government 
and if, if it is like with opposition uh, without opposition it is 20000 with opposition it's uh, 25000 they can uh, get it reimbursed and government is very strict about it they cannot charge a single penny uh, apart from this you all you have to do is just file the uh, pay the uh, patent filing fee apart from that all the professional charges would be borne by these uh, uh, facilitators so they also will give a general advisory on pro bono basis and they will assist in drafting filing and uh, if there are as i told it requires some kind of a professional uh, advice although uh, people are masters uh, uh, in uh, subject knowledge uh, it becomes difficult to deal with these kind of an activities that's why every company in our company when uh, one particular scientist uh, or uh, busy in synthesizing and developing a molecule uh there is an ip department which takes care of all these uh, uh, you know ip related activities so they are professional people they will help you file and prosecute the patents or trademarks that has been proposed by this uh, startup uh, scheme so these are all the benefits i don't want to read out everything um so uh that's what i mean the procedure is like uh, the government announced uh, people to voluntarily register uh, all the patent agents advocates uh, uh, you know law firms to register under this facilitator scheme so that uh, any person who wants to take the help can go into that uh, list and they can uh, choose a facilitator of their choice or else they can go and write it to the respective patent office so the controller of uh, patents would provide three names and finalize the facilitator so uh, fee for filing uh, patent design and other things uh, only would be uh, borne by the startup rest of the professional fee would be um, taken care by the uh, you know facilitators so as on date uh, i just recently clarified that this facility is only available for the startup companies and i heard that uh, government is also considering about the educational institutions because i was about to give this uh, presentation uh, we take care of companies so we are not bothered about the uh, facilitators so, but uh, to I, i i expected that this question would be asked so when i inquired uh, they i was told that as of now the small entities or individuals uh, like um, uh, one person company uh people can get uh, this kind of facility they are also considering of including the educational institutions here which if they do it will be very fantastic uh, so uh, initially the scheme was in a pilot phase for one year now they have extended up to 2023 and uh, this will encourage many people to come forward and uh, go ahead and uh, file their uh, you know ips so i have also given some useful resources so on the top you can see the patent sites uh, uh from where you can uh, do a different keyword search uh like how you do a google search you can uh, enter uh, the search terminology and get the patent uh, informations um so and uh, there are some drug related uh, databases I, i mean there are many resources uh, but uh i have just given some of the important ones so that you can uh, just go and do a general search on this so uh, i think i have covered uh, majorly as i said it's a very uh, important uh, topic and very vast topic and uh, each slide i can spend 2 uh, to 3 days to discuss but i have uh, tried to keep it in a nutshell which is relevant to you and as this is just a start maybe in the future we can uh, uh, meet more and then take two advanced topics and then we can discuss uh, so if you have any questions i would be happy to answer uh, so let us i am expecting more questions from you uh, because uh, you know virtual meeting uh, all thanks to technology but uh, i feel uh, the professors also would agree with me it's a very boring platform because we don't get to see the faces and reactions so it's like uh, talking uh, solo in front of a pc uh, so i want to uh, listen from you so if you have any questions please go ahead i'll try to answer you you can use the chat 
also any questions students staff thank you sir for your uh, elaborate presentation on ipr and uh, we are very much pretty clear about uh, the patenting process etc okay and, uh, sir uh, uh, you uh, what is the difference between the uh, trademark and service mark uh, trademark and service mark uh, uh, i mean uh, both are brand names now for example uh, uh, when you say apple it's a product so apple products apple apple phones um, apple uh, pcs like macbooks that's a product uh, mark but when we talk about an airtel or a kingfisher airline so they are service providers they don't sell products they sell service so they take uh, so they are service like swiggy zomato so these are all service providers so if the brand name is for a service it's called service mark if it is for a product it's a uh, it's a trademark so uh, the concept is same only uh, the product or a service uh, uh, is the differentiating factor the purpose is same uh, sir um, as a department we are doing some service to the community okay uh, can we uh, uh, patent the no patent uh, would be uh, filed only for uh, inventions uh, so services and other things will not be can we go uh, for uh, service mark then yeah you can uh, for example uh, uh, like uh, you have any um, uh, like name for your particular association like bishop bishop heber uh, chemistry association or anything so and if that qualifies under the trademark uh, category so you can actually go ahead and protect that uh, name um, as uh, uh, we have uh, one uh, in fever uh, fever uh, hygiene enterprise actually, yeah yeah uh, can we go for a service uh, mark uh, yeah yeah you can you can protect that name so yeah, in general i mean uh, the brand name whether you now even if apple tomorrow comes with a, a telecom providing or if they start an airline service or anything so the brand name would be the same only uh, uh, because they are offering a service it is called a service mark so any name sign symbol tagline can be trademark protected for well, that also we need to uh, i mean uh, process like a patent it's not necessary uh, it's not necessary uh, to register a trademark you can start using and uh, you can say you can do a novelty search from yourself uh, if this name is known already or not if it is new and you can start using the tm symbol but if some of your competitors for example if i am also starting uh, uh, something with your, your name and you want to sue me uh, for uh, you know using your name then uh, to go legally uh, the law requires you to register the trademark so that you can act against me for infringement proceedings Okay. Okay. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Uh, there are few questions that is posted on the chat box. Okay. Uh, like, uh, can I read them for you? Yes, I'll just take a look in that. Okay. Attention for your change companies. Is patent available for new varieties of crops for farmers in the? uh no in general plants or animals or any uh, plant patents are available in united states so they give plant plant patents but in india we don't have uh, that protections uh, you know actually uh, for living uh, uh, organisms uh, even some dna are patentable in us uh, there was a landmark case where uh, a company isolated a dna naturally occurring dna and then they tried to file a patent and after a long uh, court argument uh, finally court said that just because you isolated or you came up with a naturally occurring uh, dna sequence it is not patentable if there is any kind of human uh, efforts like amount of experimentation it is genetically modified you have uh, put uh, some undue efforts in uh, synthesizing it then it can be patented so uh, as such uh the any uh, seed plant or animal varieties uh, are not patentable 
in India. Okay. Any other questions? So, thank you, sir, for your wonderful talk. Uh, you have mentioned that uh, copyright is like a lifelong right and the patent is valid only for 20 years. Mm -hmm. But in both cases, our work is being protected. I was wondering why we prefer patent over copyright, but in where like patent is valid only for 20 years. Okay, that's a very good question. So, uh, uh, Kritika, uh, I mean, if I can ask, uh, what talent do you have uh, in extracurricular activities like music, singing, um, or art, photography? You, are, you, do you have any interest in that? Yeah, I, I, I always like I have all, all, all interest in all the categories. You are now. good at uh, one particular thing. Can you just say? Just yeah, for, I used to, uh, uh, yeah, I used to write some articles. Like sometimes I, oh, I'm good, good at writing. Yeah. Okay, so you, you are also a chemistry student, right? Yes. Now, the thing is, uh, you have come up with a new poem or a new novel, new script. So you want to protect it. So you would uh, choose copyright to protect your uh, novel, poem, or a uh, script. But patent, you're also a chemistry student now with your boss, with your uh, professor. You are working in the lab, and you are coming with a polymer or a compound uh, You know that is useful for treating a disease or it, it is useful for something. Uh, it's a new invention. You will file a patent. So um, reverse is not possible. Now you cannot go and file a copyright for the invention. Now you, file, you can file a patent for your uh, script. So these are categories, multiple categories. Now artistic or works uh, like which is out of your talent fall in the copyright. If you want to, now I'll tell you one example. Uh, uh, for example, uh, now you have come up with that script, you will file a copyright for that. So you can protect a copyright for that script. And you have come up with an invention, uh, like a new device uh, that can quickly uh, detect COVID and uh, within a few seconds, you can detect whether the patient is COVID positive. So you file that particular device, uh, a patent to protect that. And you are coming up with uh, a new name for that device, like Kritika device. So you will file a trademark for it. Okay, okay. so this is how uh, the IP forms differ. So names can be protected by trademark, inventions can be protected by patent, and artistic and literary works can be protected by copyright. Uh, okay, uh, I also wanted to add another question, like we researchers publish our research work in journals, but mm -hmm. nowadays like uh, people also prefer uh, getting copyright for their research work. Uh, I was wondering if every people go for copyright, then the data will not be available online to access like every research people. So I was uh, thinking is that copyright an issue in literature work? Uh, uh, what's your opinion on this? I want to. Uh, I mean, there is always a two sides of a coin. Uh, even in India, you know, there was a case that photocopying, and in general, I mean, even from my day, I don't know now that technology advancement has come how far. So we always, even though we have the books uh, to read, we always prefer professor notes, and uh, that's very easy to for us to understand. And we do photocopying of the books, which are highly costly. That time, Jerry March, you know, not everyone can afford. So we usually go for photocopying and all. Uh, in other countries, if you see, it's a strict violation of the author's right because he has put in hours and hours of research in uh, you know, doing his work. So, and the author feels that he deserves a credit. He wants to be uh, appreciated or recognized for his uh, work. So he is not wrong to do so. So copyright is not a wrong thing because after all you have put the effort and you want to protect uh, it from you know illegally getting uh, used by others so uh, and the other side in india the court said that for educational purpose photocopying of these things will not be considered as a copyright uh, violation so that's what in our country it's not a violation but in uh, elsewhere uh, that's a serious violation of uh, copyright and uh, yes uh, copyright if you protect um, uh, I mean, it's, uh, you can always uh, design around. I mean, if there is something protected, you will always try to navigate and, you know, uh, try to come out of it. So there are uh, multiple methods to come out of that. Uh, even in law also, we have uh, many cases, uh, we find loopholes and we try to come out of that case. So even in copyright, we can do so.
so copyright is not a wrong thing uh, mm -hmm. uh, if you were an author if you have put your effort so would you like to do it for free or would you like to uh, you know generate uh, revenue for it so it depends on you so if you want to protect it you are not wrong uh, if you want to give it freely to the public you can do so thank you sir thank you so much and there is another question uh, can we patent an idea of mobile app ola uber etc uh, yes uh, idea as such not uh, you can protect uh, a combination of a, a software with a novel hardware so for example imagine that was a system for uh, like we saw one patent right electrochemical device for uh, uh, identifying covid-19 patients so uh, it will uh, obviously it will be a mix of everything you know it's an electrochemistry uh, and then there will be some software embedded program in it so you can definitely patent it it depends on how you present it if you simply want to protect a program you can copyright it and if you want to uh protect the application of it uh, then you have to combine with a hardware and then uh, you can uh, do it so so i mean for this question uh, i just wanted to show that there is an infosys patent so this is how our india patent will look so you can see uh, i hope you are able to see the screen so now your screen is not shared okay just a second i'm still mastering this technique i'm not a zoom person so anyways no, um, i mean uh, my intention was to tell that uh, you can combine software with a hardware and you can protect it uh, as such software are not patentable uh you can combine for example a system for uh, testing uh, so and so having a computer uh, program uh, sequence like this uh, so you can uh, uh, i mean cleverly combine that and then you can file a patent so uh, th that's what as i said it is all about your creativity so uh, you have to do certain uh, uh, games so to draft a patent uh, so that you can uh, get it granted one yeah. i have a small question uh, to ask uh, so yes. let me take like a, if i am synthesizing a, a pharmaceutical a polymer kind of thing okay uh, like uh, if, is there any database to check whether uh, i mean uh, i synthesize it using a different technique so is there any database to go and check whether uh, uh, this kind of uh, technique has been used or not how to how to find that this is an innovative idea or this is a new kind of thinking is there any kind of a database or something like that yeah um, actually in general i have already given you the uh, free databases each patent office is, has its own uh, searchable patent uh, uh, database so india was the worst in the previous years nowadays they have also improved a lot uh, even countries like taiwan uh, korea they have very good patent uh, website wherein you can search with different category now if you want to know like you are following a particular competitor uh, say you are interested in a professor who works for another college uh, uh, like you want to know what kind of inventions he is working so you can do a author search in that website or if you are looking for a particular polymorph so you can go with a polymorph uh, search terminology and see what kind of polymorphic forms are uh, being filed or if you have a compound name uh, say we are working on uh, some oseltamivir which is an influenza treatment or uh, uh, or we are working on uh, apix7 which is an anticoagulant so you want to know literature pertaining to that compound you can do that so it's about like how you sit in front of a google and uh, do a keyword search you can do a structured uh, keyword search in these databases yes in addition to that we also have uh, some paid uh, databases like scifinder stn so those uh, even a single uh, user license cost uh, more than 65 70 lakhs per annum and um, and uh, some uh, like institutions like iits i'm not sure whether the uh, bharatidasan university has some uh, central universities do have uh, subsidized 
license with them uh, for uh, their research purpose. So that has multiple uh, structural, you know, you can draw a structure and then get references related to that. And uh, you can do keyword search. So there are multiple paid databases like SciFinder and uh, Orbit, uh, you know, um, at base. So these days there are a number of uh, subscription databases and uh, uh, through that actually we use multiple forms of it. Uh, one is uh, the, the very important one which we use is SciFinder. Uh, we can find the cast number and novelty uh, searches of a compound. Uh, from that it gives both patents, non-patent uh, references. We have ESTN, uh, which is, uh, these both products are from the CAS chemical abstract service. And we also have multiple uh, keyword searching databases, uh, which we use. So by using that, that's what, by searching the literature uh, you, through this database, you can find out whether your invention is novel or not. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Samshula. Thank you for answering all those questions of our students very patiently. Yeah. Uh, some of them were very simple questions, but still you were uh, very uh, keen on answering every question on the chat box. Thank you very much. You're welcome. If you want your action to inspire others, dream more, learn more, do more, and become more, that's how you become a remarkable achiever in life. We thank our guest speaker, Mr. S. Samsula, Senior Manager, Intellectual Property, Pharmaceutical R&D Bangalore, for the informative talk. The expression, thank you, is so simple yet. Powerful that can enable people to do a lot more than what is expected. We call upon Dr. S. Jagan Jennifer, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, Bishop Liba College, to propose the Ought of Thanks. Gratitude is a powerful catalyst for a named reaction called happiness. It sparks the light, a fire of joy into your soul. So I ex extend my sincere thanks to the Lord Almighty for continuously showering his blessings on the chemistry department family. I thank Dr. Quincy Merlin from the bottom of my heart. I want to express my heartfelt thanks, gratitude to her for making each of us from a simple stone to a wonderful art. I just want to thank our, our chief guest and the speaker, Mr. Shamshula, the senior manager of Intellectual Pharmaceutical R&D Bangalore, for giving a wonderful explanation about what is a patent, what is the what is a, what is an invention, what is innovation. Uh, so, so many topics like uh, trademarks, and particularly. Uh, what are the polymorphic, uh, uh, a few examples about the polymorphic problems that have been uh, uh, going on in the R&D companies. And uh, he gave a very good explanation about the various international patenting agencies. And uh, he briefly explained about the various forms uh, that are needed for uh, patenting uh, any uh, work. So I think this would be an eye opener for many of our researchers as well as our uh, uh, students uh, and uh, they will be uh, very much uh, uh, very much uh, interested in uh, knowing all these uh, new ideas and uh, uh, my special thanks to dr sharmila uh, nadia madam for organizing this program in a grand manner i also thank all the faculty members for their kind cooperation at last i want to thank all the stars of the bishop Weber college that is, uh, dear student friends, without your participation, this meeting will not be fulfilled. I thank you all for listening. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, it was really interesting to, uh, you know, uh, meet you all and looking forward to many such uh, meetings. So in case you have any questions or queries, I have uh, already given my email ID in the title slide. So I'm also available in LinkedIn. Anytime you need any uh, questions related to the pharma industry or any sort of help. Uh, so I'm always open to uh, you know listen to you. Thank you very much. And, uh, um, and I wish you all the best. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Samshula. See you all later. Uh, thank you, students, for joining with us. Uh, you can revert back to your classes.
and um, other academic activities for now. Thank you.